What's up YouTube, it's Jacob from International Precision Engineering and we're looking at the Canon EOS M5. The problem with this camera, at least for me, is the flip down screen. So when I'm filming myself, I, you know, I'm almost always using a tripod. This is the camera on the tripod now. Obviously it's great, it's stable, just like most cameras and the way the tripod's designed. And here's the camera with the offset. So if you look at it, as my screen flips down with almost no gap here, it clears everything that I need it to clear. We can see it clearly from the front and the only obstruction here is the screw. I really wanted to talk in depth about how I designed this, you know, offset bracket and I did it, I made my own because the solutions on the web are sort of terrible. From this view you could see that it's, you know, fits my tripod almost fully to take, take advantage of the most contact area I can. And what these webs do is maintain strength while allowing you to remove most of the material. We talk about weight and why it's so important to shave weight in every place that we can. Well, this is like one of those $10 tiny little tripods. And as you can see, I'm on my bike, so I don't want to be carrying around some huge thing. And I'm not trying to do fluid head video pans. These legs are like radio antennas, you know? I mean, it's not the most stable thing, but if I'm hiking, this fits right in the backpack. Okay, the bracket still goes on, screen flips down, everything's good. It's very stable, very light, does the job. One of the features that I designed into this bracket that I don't see with the features online is this concept of uneven material. So you can see that the screen goes almost all the way up to the camera, right? But if you made the whole bracket that thin, this thing would, be, would not be very stable. So you, I have a lot of material over here up to the screen and then it starts to get thinned down. So you could see from this view that the material, all the material is removed from the areas where you don't need it. So for example, it's profiled to fit the camera, okay? And it's pocketed over here like we talked about. And then this section right here, so my tripod ends here and the sort of center of gravity of the camera is like somewhere just to the left of the screw. So this is where I want most of my strength. So again, it's all the material is left here until about here where my screen starts and then I start to remove it. So it really makes this bracket strong. And then again, from this view, you see this little recess there. That's for the screw, your C-clip to keep your screw in there once you have a custom screw. I realize that we're all not gonna run out and start buying CNC machines so we can make our own bracketry, okay? Or pay to have somebody make it. But this was the prototype for this and it's made out of eighth inch aluminum, okay? And it's, it's fairly rigid. Um, and it does the same thing as this, right? And I made this in about 30 minutes with a hacksaw, a file, and a drill and tap, okay? So it's not hard, it's not complicated. Once you draw out your profile with a Sharpie, you can take a hacksaw and cut it out. And then to make it all pretty and nice, you just take a file and, you know, file all your edges straight and bust down all your sharp corners. Then you can get these drill and tap sets, right? So get a quarter 20, they're like five bucks at the hardware store. It comes with the tap drill and everything. And if you don't have a drill, borrow one from your buddy, buzz, buzz the holes through and that's it. Okay, and then, and then your bracket's made. And then the hardest part, right, is how am I gonna attach the camera? So we're gonna tap this for quarter 20, which means that I, my tripod mount will thread right into the bottom of it. But then how do we attach the camera? And it's really kind of simple. So the easy way is just to get yourself a quarter 20 bolt and a nut. And then that goes through a through hole. So you drill it oversized and then that threads into the camera, okay? And then I say the, the bolt and the nut just to give you a little bit more flexibility because there's not many threads in the camera and you want it to go all the way in and take advantage of all those threads so you don't strip out your $1,200 camera. And if you're lucky or you design your system right, you can get a whole handful of screws at different lengths and try them, okay? And these are like a buck each for the package or dollar US, I should say. And 
you're in business. So for for less than 20 bucks, you could buy all the tools to make this bracket and then the material you can find again at the hardware store you just got to be a little bit more creative you know like i said this piece here is eighth inch aluminum and where i get my material from all of my material is i actually go to the local metal supply and anything about this size is what they consider scrap so you buy this basically for a little bit more than scrap prices and and if you're buying one they'll probably just give it to you and say have a nice day <laughs> like literally they they sell hundreds of feet of this stuff and and like this is what they throw in the garbage can after they cut off and measure to the job so don't be afraid walk in there and just tell them what you're doing and i'm sure they'll hook you up before I go into showing you exactly how I made this one, I want to say thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the support I've gotten from my channel where we make things like this and make lots of noises that aggravate not only the wife and the family, but probably the neighbors too. <laughs> if you want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.